just most people I know that are successful had a hard life, a shitty life. They were poor, whatever it is, abused, whatever you want to call it. They had a shitty life when they were a kid and they became an adult and they used that, the small percentage that use that as like, turn that into a, a superpower instead of like a weakness, turned in and became successful. So now when those people have kids, are those people's kids going to have an easy life or a hard life? Easy. Pretty easy life. So now those kids are going to be spoiled brats. And they're not going to have... And then they're going to give their kids a bad life. So they're not going to have the same strengths that their parents got because their parents had got their strength and their discipline and their toughness from having a shitty childhood, but they don't want to give their kids a shitty childhood. So they're giving the kids a good life because now they're successful, making money, living in nice neighborhoods, whatever else. So what should they do? What should those parents do? They no. should give them. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never give it up. I ain't never you know give it up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you. I ain't worried about you. I ain't never so let me break, 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 break it all down for you. I ain't never give it up. I ain't never you know give it up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you. I Welcome to a new episode of Breaking the Cycle Podcast. Whoop, whoop. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about why it's important for kids to do hard things. Hard, hard stuff. Hard what? Stuff. I thought you hard said hard shh. Why is it important for kids? Kid to do hard stuff. I like it. So basically, why is it important for kids to suffer? To be dun dun dun. To to be tortured. Challenged. To be what, what tortured. Uh let's suffer. Stick to challenge. Suffer, challenge, tortured. All the above. Um toughened. So what's let let's let's hop right into it. So why is it important for kids, specifically kids? Do you think it's important for adults too? Of course, of course, yeah. Just, okay, so, but we're talking about specific, specifically for kids. Why is it it's important also, for kids? It's very important for kids. It's also very important for adults, but it's mostly more important for kids so that if they become disciplined and if they do hard things when they're younger, it's easier for them to do it when they're older. Also, so before we, before we, hold up, before before we get started, I was just about to say, who wants to start a joke? Hey, and I'm ready. Though. I'm already prepared. I already got my joke ready. I do too. Who did the last one last time? We only did one last, that last episode. Yeah. All right. Whatever you Who's got one? All right. Let's go. Let's hear it. Let's go. All right. Mm, I don't know which one to say. All right. What is always in front of you but can't be seen? We never did this before? No, sir. What? Say it again. No, say it again because you're very unclear. You weren't even near the microphone. You're like over here and what was it? What is always in front of you but can't be seen? Time. This is not figure outable. Time. Close. Schedule. Future. Ding, ding, ding. That's, that's, why are you giving me What a, do you mean oops? That is, that is, uh. How are you giving me, I got it immediately and you're giving me the button like I got it wrong? <laughs> and I, that's, a, and that's a one and a half pointer. Wait, if she does it on accident, then it's plus. <laughs> she gets the going, the going for her. Wait, should we do, should we do, should we do, if she does it on accident, you get another half a point? No, that's just, that's yes. dumb. So that's a one and a half pointer. I got that one immediately. So after, one. After one second. One and a half out of two point nine after one second because time and future, like I had it was there. I had it. Okay. I had it. All right. So why is it important for kids to do hard sh- stuff? Stuff. Stuff. Why is it important for hard kids? So what's the what's the Mitch? Kick us off. Why do you think it's important for kids to do hard stuff? One of the main reasons kids should do hard stuff is so they have good self-esteem that is not just fake or just made up by adults and their teachers. Whoa, to whoa, make whoa, them whoa, 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 made up about adults and teachers? Yeah. Oh, what about on. parents? You might think parents too? Think parents make up? Yes. Yes, parents definitely. They make up self-esteem for kids? Especially when they're like babies. How? How do they do it? So basically it's like... So, uh, uh, for teachers, let's say uh, teachers, you're doing a test in school, a math test, and at the end, the teacher shows the uh, teacher shows your grades to the rest of the class, and Mr. Jimmy, 
Okay. It's an example. Type. Oh, it's an example. Oh. And and uh, Mr. Jimmy, the teacher showing the rest of the class Jimmy's Jimmy's math test, he gets one question correct, and that's two plus two, and the rest of it's like division, and he gets it all wrong. So he gets two plus two right. She's like, oh my gosh, Jimmy, you did so great. So basically, they're getting credited when for things. When I was a kid, things. the teacher would be they're like, getting- Jimmy, you're a dumbass. When I was a kid, that's what they would have told them. And they also baby kids in school. They like... They're making them soft. Like they credit them for failure. Like it, when we used to run in the morning in school, we used to run for at least ten minutes every morning, and like it should have been like if you're not running, then th- something. But I thought you said you would run for ten minutes in the morning. Uh, some kids just wouldn't decide to run. They just chat. But I thought you chat. said you're running. Wouldn't the teacher say, "Okay, we're running for ten minutes," or is it optional? It was. They said that we're going to be running for 10 minutes in the morning, but they never enforced it. Would the kids run or not? No, they would not run. So they'd be walking. So it was optional. Yeah. Yes, but some of my friends would what run. you? Oh, I ran the entire time, every single time. And it's something to like look forward to in the morning. And and so they would only run. I was, gonna, I was just about to say, wow, that sounds awesome. They would, they would have the kids run. It make the kids run ten minutes every morning. I think that's awesome that they did that, but it's not that awesome if they just let them just walk and do nothing. Like I. So would you walk and do nothing? No, I ran. I I just said I ran every single time the entire time. The entire time. How many kids did that? How many kids ran the entire time every time? None. But some like two. Some or, ran two, the entire thing. Two sometimes or three, two or three of my friends were the only ones who sometimes ran the entire time. Sometimes. So not one other kid ran the entire thing every time. I I also or, have a story for fake self esteem. I actually do. So. But uh, wait, we got to stay on this topic for a little bit. Though. Well, but this is the same topic: fake self esteem, like telling them, "Oh, good job," and whatever I've else. I never, I never got like a compliment or anything, because they they will only give out compliments to the people that are on the same level. What do you mean? Like they will not give out compliments to people who are doing better. Are better. Cause that'll people make, who are better. That will make the normal, they, average, mediocre kids feel bad about themselves. That is or, so or, horrible. Or That's so, it's will, horrible to say it, but it's just pathetic. That's how, actually how they do it. Like, yeah, or they'll either they'll, they'll either criticize about it, or they'll just say nothing. Either one of those. If you're if you're like a so higher with not not that you need to run every time. Yeah. I mean, not that you need credit for running every time. You're doing it for yourself, really. You're doing it just to get in better shape because that's what you're supposed to be doing and you want to work hard and you want to be better than everyone around you because you're competitive. But So no one ever, no teacher ever com- commented even, not even complimented, just commented or said anything on the fact that you're running Once or twice. every single time, the entire time, like probably hard and full speed and like pushing yourself. Yeah, I, I got over a mile at least every single time. And he told me once that one of his friends said that he was using cheats, like in a video. Yeah, game. there's this one kid that just said, "You're hacking, you're cheating." Like it was so funny. I would laugh how, so hard. Sometimes. How in his mind were you cheating on running laps? Like cutting the. How were you hacking? I I I I don't like I don't cutting really, across the field when no one's looking or something. Or how are you? <laughs> I, how do you hack? Kids would do that. A race. Just or. It was a very big, some kids, it was a very big competition for the first 30 seconds of the race. 30 seconds. They got 30 seconds of thunder, and yeah. after that, it's pure quit so, bill. So, like, the quit fourth bill. or fifth time we were running, there was this one kid, one kid in particular, that just completely hated me, and he, oh, the hater. every, hater. the hater, that, that was his nickname, every time I'd get about 10 feet behind him, he'd look behind him and just sprint ahead. Even though I'd get so many more laps than him. Like, it just, people just don't like if you're better than them. They'll purposely find ways. So the hater, they would hate on you for actually running. And they probably would call you a brown nose or like you're just trying to show off or be a little kiss ass. Or using hacks. A kiss ass or cheating or using hacks or something. You're using cheats. Because you're you're running. In gym class or whatever it is or whatever you want to call it. PE, phys ed, physical education. In, in gym class, you're actually running or trying to win. They, you're getting hated on. Like, holy crap. Do you know when I was a kid, 
I played Little League three years only. Fifth grade, sixth grade, and seventh grade. Fifth grade, I was the best on my team. Sixth grade, I was the worst on my team. No, fourth, fifth, and sixth, sorry. Fourth grade, I was the best on my team. Fifth grade, I was the worst on my team. Sixth grade, I was the best on my team. That middle year when I was the worst on the team, we won one game and lost like 15 or 16 games. We were one and 16. Horrible record. Worst team in the entire Little League. You know what happened at the end of the year? We got a trophy. Every kid on the team got a trophy. We got a trophy. Let me guess. uh, Participation. Exactly. Like, we did not deserve a trophy. We sucked. We, Where is that trophy? I have no idea. I probably smashed it with a spiked baseball bat or something. Oh, God. I actually have the same, the same thing happened to me. So one time uh, I went to a horseback riding competition once, and before we even started the competition, they gave me a participation award. Before you started it? What'd they tell you? They, I, they didn't even know if I was doing it for sure. Like a so ribbon or I, something? It, no, it was like like a bronze medal. An actual trophy? Like this big. Before you even did it? Yes. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Wait, I thought you got it for like winning or something because you got like third place. Yeah, I got third place. I got a ribbon for that. And then I got so the you got the trophy before you did it and then you got a ribbon for getting third place. And then Baseball. I got another ribbon for, uh, I got the special ribbon because I was about to fall off the horse and I did. I know. I was about to fall off the horse and I didn't, so I got the special award. So they just give out trophies and high fives and that a boys for yeah. Actually, when when I was in when I was in soccer five years ago, when I was in soccer, I remember we were in school and the school like called us, me and my friend. We were in the same class and we were both in soccer, and they called us for a trophy. I don't know what it was for. They just said that there's something for you at like the front desk. And it was just a trophy. It didn't say we won or no participation or anything like that. I think I hit the... Yeah. yeah. I think I hit the special yeah. effects button. Special effects button. Special effects button. Special effects button. Here's your chance. Here's your chance. To do what? To do what? Never mind. You lost your chance. Lost your chance. I hit the button on accident. So, all right, so for self-esteem, so you said, so they don't have fake self-esteem or made up by their parents, teachers, adults, and whatever. So that's why they should be, why, because suffering will give them, how will suffering give them self-esteem? Because they learn to do things independently. They learn to, uh, like, yeah, basically they learn to believe in themselves. Technically. How, how though? What do you mean? How, why would they learn to believe in themselves just from doing hard because stuff? Because if they do hard things, and they accomplish those hard things, then they're like, hey, I can do this, and that makes them believe in themselves, and when you believe in yourself, it gives you good self-esteem. But technically, when you, when the teachers or parents or adults give kids fake self-esteem, then it's it's really not self-esteem because they gave it to But you. shouldn't? I know what's really hard is when you're in the middle of a sentence and someone just keeps doing this to grab a microphone, and then they knock it over. That'd be very hard. And then when they broke it, it'd be hard for them running for their life. Oh, God. What do you think, either one of you, about... Let's just, let's just keep it in the middle. How about that? What you, do you, lit- you said that while moving. Because it wasn't in the middle. So what do you think about... All right, so so should parents then never say this stuff or teachers never say no, this they stuff? they should only say it if you do something good. It, they should only say it if you're doing something above average, not average. What about the average kids then? How will they ever get like... Encouraging them. Motivated or boosted up if if little Billy or Jimmy or whoever the hell the kid was got his two Mr. plus Jimmy. two, Mr. Jimmy. Jimmy. How will he ever like dig out of that like I suck mentality if no one's ever. Say Billy's like Tyson. Billy runs super oh, they're gonna fast. Say Billy's like Tyson. He's just dumb as a doornail. <laughs> Oh, that too. <laughs> well, Billy only got every every. I was question literally wrong. the best kid. In, no, that was it, Jimmy. I was the I'm best. Doing Billy All right, Billy, and Jimmy. Billy, go. So Billy runs super fast when during PE, like Tyson, and Jimmy, he's all like moping and depressed. <laughs> Says that even, Billy is using hacks, even though the teacher told him that he did great on the test. But this is a little while before that, so that didn't happen yet. Obviously, he had already had fake self esteem, but it wasn't working so the teacher walks up to jimmy and she says it's a different teacher because the other teacher gives him fake self-esteem this one doesn't so she's like hey jimmy why don't you look at billy go don't go run with billy over there and 
say Jimmy and Billy are friends, or maybe they're not. But oh, they're not anymore. Now he's Billy's gonna hate Jimmy. Like screw that kid. No. So then, the te- uh, the the other teacher, teacher number two, who doesn't give them fake self esteem, she's like, "Hey Jimmy, why don't you go run with Billy? He can teach you a thing or two about about like running or how to do it faster." Okay. How to okay. Tyson, let me ask you this. Say you so you ran every time hard, pushing yourself, running full speed every day the entire time. Yeah. Let's say little Billy who never ran or would walk for do the 30 seconds of thunder and then enter Quitville and just walk the rest of the way. But then one day he decided he's going to sort of jog, skip, trot most of the way and you're done. Who do you think is more likely to get a high five from the teacher? Him. That is sad. That is just sad. Definitely. That is so you're rewarded for But then the here see, for doing the bare minimum. You're basically rewarded more for doing the bare minimum than for going above and yeah, beyond. Yeah, but then there's the another the, then there's another problem. Say you have like like say you run super hard every morning and then the one day you have like such a high morale and that one day when you have an injury in your knee or your leg is broken and you're walking, you you'll get talked down for that. You get criticized. And then other people... And then they'll say they beat you. And then another thing is... Too, How many times did you show up sore as hell or like with a twisted ankle or just a swollen knee and then you were going to like, all right, I'm just going to take it easy. And then some kid like was like... Trot. And then some kid is like, yeah, I beat you or I'm beating you. And then what happens when they started beating you? I just had to push harder and beat them. And <laughs> just ran anyway. With the yeah, like knee. after the 24-hour... P- oh, no, not after the 24-hour PFT. After a... Some t- sort of twenty four hour challenge. I remember we uh we we were running the next day, and I was like barely trotting, barely counting it as a run, and some kid was t- like like said, "Ha ha, I'm beating you!" I got so mad, and I smoked that kid. So someone that you beat every day, and the one time that he's just probably barely ahead of you, saying he's like saying, "Ha!" How many times when you were ahead of him, the other? 364 days of the year, did you think, ha ha, I'm beating you? How many times did you say Never. that? Exactly. Like that, like it's that just the whole in, world, just their mentality is just whacked. It's like that time whacked. In, remember that time in Never Finished was, from David Goggins, how when he was running Spon- Leadville, how when he was running Leadville, that guy was like, my kid told me to beat David Goggins today. And like the last till left, he smoked him. When he was like injured, he was injured too, like almost ready to uh-huh. stop himself because of injuries or something, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, looked, I looked it up by the way other- 18 years old you have to be to officially sign up for no. Leadville because we wanted to do it this year or the next year to sign up for what? Isaiah Isaiah wanted to do it too to sign up for so I guess unless that's different maybe the website looked at a hun- it's like a 100 mile race up in the mountains in Leadville. Colorado Leadville? So it's the town that it starts in I guess I don't know all right so Midge what's another reason why kids should do hard stuff so another reason is because it creates not only like physical but also mental toughness. Why is that important? Because then if something hard happens, so say you're already doing hard things on a daily regular basis and something even harder comes up, that's not going to be as hard as it would be if you were a couch potato. Wow, you have some good knowledge on this topic what do you think about never mind uh i don't know how to word it knowing this stuff like you know it and then doing it like that's pretty hard like knowing is one thing going out there and doing it every day is hard right so the consistency and discipline can be hard for kids yeah, right makes you to, but to do that is just to be disciplined as a kid and be consistent as a kid is pretty hard right mm-hmm mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You say yes, not mm-hmm, mm-hmm while me. chewing your fingers. Don't, Don't do that. Mm-hmm, me, kid. So, Tyson, what's some reasons that you think doing hard stuff? Well, I, I, Tyson, what's some things that you reason you think doing hard stuff is important? It's important for kids, specifically kids, to do hard stuff. It, it gives yourself like a different type of energy and a sense of like accomplishment and courage. Like after the 24-hour PFT... The next day we went to the gym and I and I realized I'm like walking around like I'm like confident, courageous. But then I realized everyone around me doesn't know a thing that I did. 
but and it doesn't even matter. You still create your own confidence. You create your own crowd. And you create your own just Did you just say you have imaginary friends? No. So what what are so your create what would you say confidence? What else? What other what else is it what else does that do for you? Mid said mental toughness. It can also prepare you for emergencies. Do like EMPs. Uh, what? EMPs. That's what you're training for, Midge. EMPs. Or the zombie apocalypse. All right. What's a more? And this, this is. I mean, it's true. But what's a more? Car breaks down. Yeah, like a more realistic type thing that you. This like preparing for. A few times we were driving somewhere. I don't remember. I remember one time we were driving to jujitsu and we talked about it. Like we were fifteen or twenty miles away from home, and I was like, we were like talking about like something, and then I said. What if the car broke down right now? Like, we'd gather everything we need, pack up a 20, 30-pound pack, and just walk back home. It'd be a joke. And there was that one movie there where they had the guy, they had like nine miles or 11 miles, a guy and his son, and they the car broke down, and immediately the guy was like, this nervous wreck, like, what are we going to do? No, we're going to have to find somewhere. That in? I don't remember. One of those dumb, like, a stupid, one of those. Free YouTube movies? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Is like we're gonna have to find somewhere to spend the night. Like it was like nine or eleven miles or twelve, not far at all, and it wasn't even. But it, like the, oh, the, but it's getting dark. Gonna get dark soon or something. They'll say. Oh my but because they, God. I hate that. The walking, I hate that. Imagine that the father's the like that. Dead, it'd be like twelve p.m. and they'd be saying, "Oh, it's getting dark soon." It's gonna get dark soon. We better find somewhere for the night. And then it cuts to the scene like it's midnight. So what are some other regular scenarios where you were doing hard stuff? purposely will help you in what types of scenarios in real I life. I actually have a story. So we were we were it, like doing hard things. It like I said it gives you mental toughness and physical toughness. It like prepares you prepares you for harder thing, even harder things. So I actually have a story. So we were moving and you, we were doing all of the hard things that you need to do when you're moving, like driving back and forth from the houses, bringing all of your uh, all of your belongings and stuff, packing your stuff too, driving to see houses if you haven't chosen one, all of that. We then all we did was literally move down the street. We did all of that hard stuff just to move down the street. We were forced to do so much hard work for practically nothing. You still had to move to a new house, so either way, yeah. it's a new house. I, actually, in I don't know if Midge was born yet, but we actually moved down the street twice. You and Molly did. She was. With she was me. just born, and we did the first one. That one was not. Oh. That one wasn't even down the street. That was literally across the street. Like I could take a piss from standing at the one house and hit the <laughs> next house with my piss. That's how close it was. <laughs> Yeah. How many times have I moved? Six times? More. I don't even. Wanna, I've I don't moved even like know. six times in like the last. I don't know, but I'm gonna die. Life. I'm gonna die in this house here. I'll tell you that. Let's Hopefully hope. not today, but I'm gonna die yep. in this house. We've been in six houses. So. Oh my gosh. Or seven. So one one reason I think it's important for kids to have to do hard stuff, specifically kids, is most people that I know that are successful as adults had hard lives, had shitty lives when they were kids. So, oh, yeah. So if, if, like myself and just most people I know that are successful had a hard life, a shitty life, they were poor, whatever it is, abused, whatever you want to call it. They had a shitty life when they were a kid and they became an adult and they used that, the small percentage that use that as like, turn that into a, a superpower instead of like a weakness turned in and became successful. So now when those people have kids, are those people's kids going to have an easy life or a hard life? Easy. Pretty easy life. So now those kids are going to be spoiled brats. And they're not going to have... And then they're going to give their kids a bad life. So they're not going to have the same strengths that their parents got because their parents had got their strength and their discipline and their toughness from having a shitty childhood, but they don't want to give their kids a shitty childhood. So they're giving the kids a good life because now they're successful, making money, living in nice neighborhoods, whatever else. So what should they do? What should those parents do? They not, should give their kids a good life, but, but make it challenging them, at the same time. But not give them anything that they want, like demand, like demanding children. Not everything that they want. Kid, who is who? What are you? Dude, don't you remember in the car today? Turn on the AC. Turn on the AC. Turn on the AC. Exactly. Turn on the AC. Turn I'm on driving, the AC. trying to get my sunglasses on and get my drink. And get the while I'm driving a car, and it's like turn on the AC. On the, turn on the AC. 
I'm like, all right, one second. I'm getting myself. Turn, turn on, on the AC. AC. Turn on the AC. I'm really hot. Turn on the AC. Holy like crap. Like, God. Jeez. How just many times did we say turn on the AC? Comment down below and see I mean, how many times. It was about 100 times. degrees, but I like that heat. After, after the sauna, and I go in the car and just keep dripping sweat. Hell yeah. But so, yeah, wait. So what'd you say? So what should the parent do then? What should the parent do? The parent now, parent had a shitty life. They're abused. They were poor. They were hungry. They were starving, miserable, lonely, depressing childhood. They use that as a weapon to become tough and successful and they create a good life for themselves and they have kids and they have a great life. What should that parent do so that they don't rob their kid of that same type of strength and resilience Make building? Make them work out. <laughs> that's, that's a, a way. That's a, that's the a foundation right there. Do, working out, exercise, hikes. not just uh, there's like a different hikes, hard there's hikes. A different, there's a difference between exercise and workouts. And like people, training, 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 training is like a level above working out. It's preparing for life, like what we're talking about. And yeah, make not even make yeah make them work out. Like it's like work encourage, out, encourage like, work out with them. And work out together, train together, do hard stuff together, go on hard hikes, do 20, like 24-hour 24 challenge that we just did. Think about this. We just did 24-hour weightlifting challenge. Just let's say, let's go back into the fantasy world. I mean, the fantasy world nowadays. Who knows? Like, it's the end of the world. It's the apocalypse. Like, and we we're talking about self-esteem, and you're talking about confidence, and talking about emergencies, and talking about if you needed to, you know. Imagine this, that we had to, around our entire property, we had to fill up sandbags and pile them four feet high around the entire property that would probably take us that would probably take us about 24 hours to do non-stop work we know now definitely do that we are capable of working straight through with a little bit of food just some water no, no sleep zero sleep and still be able to perform at a high level an exerting or level i had to drink lots of water i know though. but as long as we have our uh, water and, and, this was, and it was in the sandwich. heat. It was 100 degrees throughout the, the sunny hours of the day and then straight through the night. Imagine, like, worst case scenario. We had to do that and, and pack it around a full over acre proper that we have and then set up the barbed wire all around and set up all this stuff and then be ready to fight after that or during that, like, knowing that, oh, I could do that. Another day at the office. I've done it before. Like, that's basically what we are We've training for. We've actually done it twice. So already. think, if we're training for that, that's making us train for much lower level. If, we, if you're training for the worst, you're trained for pretty much then what? Everything else. Anything that comes your way. Whatever the universe decides to kick you in the nuts, you're prepared for it. I actually think I have a plan for, say, we were doing that sandbag thing and we got attacked during it. Don't go to the vulnerable spots that we still haven't put up the sandbag yet. That is just uh, absolutely brilliant. But think that you have, realizing we have what it takes to work as a team, to work as a family. Do, we wouldn't need to rely on anyone else. Just our family alone. I know you didn't just you on a camera and try to hide it and knock your headphones off, but we'll pretend we didn't see all that happen. Think about that. Just our family alone would be able to do this entire property in less than one day, like fortify the entire place, fill, digging the dirt, filling up the sandbags, tithing them up, moving them around, then having to maybe put some on the roof and set up some positions on the roof that are fortified. Then all that, move stuff around, moving tires around, moving metal around to, for, for armor. Like, and that's the worst case, like you're at war. If you can be know in your head you're confident and prepared for that, you are prepared for anything. This is why we do the hard shit. This is why we make you work out. We don't have to make some people work out. Yeah. But it's, it's because you, it was helping you to be prepared to be an adult. Being an adult, do you think, is just like, not that it's hard, but you it's have a lot, a lot of respo more responsibility. You have a lot of responsibility. It's a lot harder than being a child. A lot of different things coming in different directions decisions. you have to deal with emotionally and mentally and physically. And yeah, you have to make decisions. You have to be able to control that stuff. And the way to do that is, all right, if I've already been through this, oh, wow, this thing is real tough. After the hard shit I just did, this is a joke over here. And you can handle it any day of the week. You can handle that shit in your sleep. So that's to me the main reason to have kids do it. You're preparing them for the chaos of being of the real world and being an adult, and especially so they can protect you because you're you're too old and you can't do. It hell yourself. yeah, I'm training you to replace you two to replace me. Hell yeah, you better be replacing me. That should be your plan. You're saying it like as it's a joke. Like you better be. But adults like they need to make super hard decisions. 
Like, that kids don't need to really make decisions about their life. Their parents do. And I'm going to make a little quick joke about this. You need to make hard decisions, like whether to choose the unicorn plushie toy over the horse plushie toy. <laughs> just just doing yourself again. Like. Yeah, you're, you're the doinger for today. Holy crap. I know. So, so also, what's another thing that doing hard stuff and Creating this discipline and resilience and mental toughness. Oh, wait, let's get a break from this and do a quote. And self esteem. Well, not in the middle of a sentence. Jeez. Oh, yeah, sorry. Once you're done. What is something that that gives you as a kid? Discipline. All right, but no, what does that discipline give you? Credibility. Credibility. That's the exact word I'm looking for. Gives you credibility. When you say, can I go eat this thing even though I haven't worked out yet? Or can I go use this screen because I need to go do something even though I haven't worked out yet? When you know you don't get screens until you work out. But if I know that you're going to work out and I have no doubt about it, yeah, go do what you got to do. And then I know the workout's going to happen. That's credibility. You get it? Like doing hard stuff. Jeez. Doing hard stuff gives you that credibility as a kid. Kids need to build up credibility eventually, especially as you get a little bit older. Like you guys are now not little Google Gaga little toddlers, although sometimes we may act like it. What? Yeah, I ain't saying no names because snitches end up in ditches. Mm-hmm. But it prepares you for emergencies, prepares you, prepares you for bad situations, for accidents, for think we're in California. There could be an earthquake or we're traveling. We could be in Texas. There could be a, a freaking tornado. We could be in New York. There could be a, a hurricane or a massive snowstorm and there's poles and stuff all over the place. Like you need to be, you never know. We travel a lot. We're always out in the RV. The RV could break down in the middle of but bumblefuck, who knows where, in the middle of nowhere. You never know what's going to happen it's and you need to you. be, per- I know, damn it. I was trying to go without, damn it. Cut. Yeah, sure. But beep, beep that one out. We're trying to make it, we're trying to go no <laughs> F-bombs on the BTC. We're a little too late for that. So, also gives you accomplishment, like you said already, makes you feel accomplished. And usually, if you go into stuff, hard stuff, usually, with the right mentality, what does that hard stuff become? Easy stuff. Easy, but what else? Even more than that. Less challenging. Less challenging? Is it miserable? No. It's no. fun. It becomes fun. Like When you can learn to take miserable, hard stuff and turn it into fun, like... What could stop, like when you, you make it fun, what could stop you? You make it a, a joke almost, like you're doing the impossible with a smile on your face and having fun doing it. Imagine when the real world happens and shit is going downhill and shit is going sideways. Everyone else is miserable and having a hard time suffering. You're like, I got this smile on your face. Like, oh, this is just another day at the office. Like, that's why it's important for kids. It's preparing you for the real world. The real world is nasty grimy, dirty, there's liars and thieves and people are going to steal from you and cheat you. Like it's out there. They're going to attack you. Like that is the real world. That is the brutal real world. That's just what's out there. That's the way it is. Like you need to be prepared for that stuff. And the more you build up that mental toughness, that resilience, that suffering, you're prepared for the nasty real world. Making sure there's no thieves. So anything else to add to that? On... No, we covered no, we, most we, of it, yeah. We, Anything else to add about reasons why it's important? I know you had a bunch of them, yeah, Midge. Yeah, I have like 500. Great, Just give me five. Okay, so a way I actually prepared for the moving thing was because, because like, so how I prepared for doing that hard thing, moving just down the street, literally. I prepared for it because our whole family did, because... We drove across the country voluntarily, the whole entire country. We did, and then moved into an empty house that we were renting when we first moved here, empty house before any of our stuff got here, so we had to sleep on the floors for a little while. Yeah, we didn't have Because until the furniture got here, because it took a while to get here. Then we had to go buy some stuff just to survive for those few days, and then we do survival days where we go out into the backyard, and we go live in the backyard for overnight just for the hell of it, like a camping day just to see, say, all right, are we capable of surviving outside and dealing with it and figuring it out and pitching a tent and eating off of MREs and all this other stuff? Like, Mountain houses. We haven't done one. We haven't done one in this house yet. We need to do one like in the next couple weeks. Yes. Those are fun. And those are fun. It 
it really sounds like it sucks having to live in the backyard only with the food that's in your backpack and that's it. No stove, no whatever else, but we make it fun and we end up starting a fire. You can then cook some food on the fire or whatever else. Like we, you hear weird noises and animals in the middle of the night and have to go check it out. It's a little scary, a little freaky, but a little fun. Like that shit is awesome. We need to do one with of those. The walkie talkies. The walkie talkies yeah. and are heavily armed. So credibility, discipline, mental toughness, physically prepared, mentally prepared, emotionally prepared is what you said. Self-esteem and preparing for the real world and to make sure you're not spoiled little freaking brats. Yeah. So, Anything to add off to finish this off with? And that is the real reason why kids should be doing hard things. So I want you guys to smash that subscribe button, click the like button, click the notifications bell so you never miss out on any future videos. Like, share, comment, leave a review on Spotify. And in case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up. I ain't never giving up. You know I'm take, take, taking that crown from you. I ain't worried about you. I ain't never So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up. I ain't never giving up. You know I'm take, take, taking that crown from you. I ain't worried about you.